Nothing could have prepared me for this. I thought I was prepared, but I wasn't. Mad Max Fury Road. I got very little sleep the night before watching this movie, so I was like really tired. I was about to fall asleep, but literally this movie was so intense. From beginning to end, it kept me on my toes the whole time. And there was one moment in this movie that really got to me and I will get, I mean, you guys probably already know. I mean, if you've, you've seen Fury Road, you probably already know the scene that I'm talking about. I can't believe none of y'all spoiled it at all. Like I was not seeing that coming. It was the most unsuspecting. What is it? Plot twist? Is it even a plot twist? Yeah, but I'll start off with what I feel about Fury Road because I watched Furiosa first. Furiosa is the first Mad Max movie that I've ever seen and now I've watched Fury Road. The main thing that stood out to me between Fury Road and Furiosa was kind of the style of the movie. Because I saw Furiosa first, I have an idea of this world in my mind that Furiosa built for me. And then when I watched Fury Road, it kind of felt different. This feels like an alternate universe. Furiosa is played by a different actress in this movie. So I was still trying to make that connection to like Anya Taylor-Joy being Furiosa and now I see Charlize Theron and I'm like, she seems like a different Furiosa. She seems like an older, more mature, more experienced, less vengeful. It's very different from the feisty Anya Taylor-Joy revenge driven girl. Her next goal to get the wives to the green place and that is this whole movie is just one huge car chase. And I know in my last video, I said that I'm not really an action person. And so the thing that surprised me so much was that I really was absorbed in the action of this movie. There was not a single dull moment in this. Everything felt gritty, brutal, almost realistic. I felt the action was there with the purpose. And because they were actually going for like a specific goal and all the action was like building up to that and you were really rooting for Furiosa, Mad Max as well, because he eventually joined them too. At first they started off as enemies. And even like one of the war boys also joining in and it just kept building like little by little. They were making progress. They were slowly getting to their goal. Even though like Immortan Joe and his whole army and everyone was like chasing them, the tension felt so real because I didn't know what was gonna happen like so many people die in this that i'm just like i wouldn't be surprised if Furiosa died in this or if like any important character died because it almost seemed like anything could happen i'm like maybe she did die i don't know i think one of the main huge differences which is actually a good representation of how different Furiosa is from fury road is how they portray like the war boys they were very tame in Furiosa. in comparison they almost seem robotic i mean they were still kind of crazy but they weren't crazy to this level they were insane. I'm just like, these people seem like they're on drugs, fighting for Immortan Joe, dying for him. All these people seem like they're super brainwashed by Immortan Joe, who is like this cult leader now. In this one, Immortan Joe, I still feel like I don't know him that much. How did he brainwash these war boys? I'm like, they're so crazy for him. They're like trying to die and like go to Valhalla. And I'm like, is he drugging their water? What is happening? They were very scary. I will say <laughs> the action in this was very scary. I screamed so many times in this movie. If I was watching this at a movie theater, it would have gotten very annoying for the people around me. It almost felt like jump scares. I also was not expecting to see Immortan Joe <laughs> actually be in the chase. Like he was like leading everything, putting his life on the line. And I'm like, why would you put your life on the line like that? He was like super into his wives. He's like, I don't want to hurt the wives. I would be interested to know like what kind of disease he has because he seems like he needs to wear this contraption that helps him breathe. Is he just mutated or does he have cancer? Like, is he gonna die? But all I know is he's trying to get an heir. So these these wives are very important to him because he wants to produce like a, a good one. But he himself is diseased. So I'm like, you're the one here contributing all the mutant genes, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know if it's because I feel like I know Furiosa because I've seen Furiosa that my main focus when I was watching this movie was on her. Max in the beginning was really, I did not know what was happening happening with him. He got captured. They were using him as a blood bag, which was also really strange. The whole thing about his past trauma and how he's like haunted by the memory of him not being able to save his daughter or the people who he loves. There was so much happening so quickly that I'm just like, oh my God, I feel like I have to see this movie multiple times to like catch everything. Because of all the things going on, all the crazy action, everything that happened, I was not ready for that moment. I don't even know how I should talk about this moment. The first thing in the Mad Max universe I was ever introduced to in my life was the concept of Furiosa being a little girl stolen from her home. Apparently this whole journey, I mean, it feels like a long road trip. You know, when you're driving, you're always like, 
I have a destination to get to. So in my mind, from the very beginning, the whole destination has always been for Furiosa to get back home to the green place. And then to watch this movie after watching Furiosa, where she went through so much, she literally went through hell in so many years to get her revenge, to climb her way up to wherever she was so she could drive the war rig. And then for her to go on this very risky journey to try to save the wives. And you know, she didn't make it home in like the first movie. So I was just like, okay, this journey isn't over. She's still on her way home. And then for this movie to just do that, <laughs> I feel like that scene, the scene when she finally gets there, all these little women, these old women come on bikes. They probably thought she died a long time ago and then she had to sort of explain to them how her mom died. And I was just like, yes, I was there. I saw your mom die and that was very brutal too. Your mom tried so hard to save you. She was a very brave and skilled woman. They were hugging each other and it was all good. I'm just like, okay, so are y'all gonna go to the green place now? So I thought, you know, they were just on the outskirts of the green place. Making sure enemies don't come in. Everything was good. Everything was good until one of the ladies, I don't know, I don't remember who but she was like oh but if you're here you would have already passed the green place i'm just like what 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 okay 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 so maybe they just have to turn around you know okay it's fine it's fine we we missed it we missed our we missed our destination we went a little further it still didn't hit me yet until one of the wives was like that place with the crows oh my god and the only reason i remember the place with but the place with the crows was because I think that was where like Max set off a bomb or something. I just remember an explosion happening somewhere around there and there were crows. That, that place, the one with that dead tree that was the most, I feel like that should have, it should have hit me, but <laughs> there was so much going on in this movie that when I saw that freaking tree, that dead tree in the middle of nowhere, when I have not seen any plants in the wasteland besides the citadel and the green place it didn't even hit me i wasn't even thinking about any of that when i saw that dead tree that they used to help pull the war rig out and then <laughs> when it finally hit me it felt like i was experiencing the whole range of human emotions all at once there was a chill that ran down my spine i had goosebumps over my arms i felt like i was on the verge of tears but there was no tears because i was just so shocked that i'm just like i don't how am i supposed to feel right now and then furiosa probably also felt that way too she probably felt like 100 times worse because it was happening to her and then she goes and you know she does that scream where she like kneels down when it finally all hits her and i'm like i remember that scene now at the end of Furiosa, when they showed this whole montage of literally all of Fury Road at the end, and I didn't even know it, that was Fury Road. I watched it thinking this is one of those like reels, like at the end of movies where they show the filming process. When I first saw that scene of her kneeling in the sand and screaming, I thought it was just, okay, they got caught, so now she's devastated. I had no idea. It was literally when she found out the whole goal of her getting home is now non-existent. This kind of a twist, it almost reminds me of that movie Atonement too. In the end, it was just a story. <laughs> it was just a story written by that girl. The two main characters, they never got back together. They both died before they even got to meet up again. I can't get over it now. I don't even know how I avoided this as a spoiler. Nobody even hinted that this was a thing. Everyone who was like, oh yeah, you should watch Fury Road. In my head, I'm like, oh, it's probably just a lot of cool action. And then I finally get to see Mad Max. So after they find out that the green place is gone, <laughs> They're thinking about what to do. And you know, the whole time I'm like, I wonder where Max is going. Like, I have no idea. I know nothing about him. And he seemed like, he seems like he has some sort of purpose. But at the same time, I'm like, is he trying to go somewhere? When he turns around and he tells Furiosa, we could go for like hundreds, 160 days or whatever that way. But there's not going to be anything. This is a freaking wasteland. The best option is to turn around. Because Immortan Joe already took all of his troops, his war boys, he left the Citadel very vulnerable. So they could control the Citadel, I guess, and that would be the best scenario because the Citadel has water, it has food, it has everything you could need to survive. That was the plan. They kill Immortan Joe, which was also a very interesting scene. And also that war boy that joined Furiosa's team, nuts or whatever that was a really weird turn of events but in the end he kind of sacrifices himself to save them this movie made me feel way more emotional than i expected and i think it's because i watched furiosa first because if i did it this movie really just starts in the middle it, it doesn't give you any background it doesn't explain anything the chase begins right away but because i watched furiosa i'm like really rooting for her at least she didn't die i'm so i'm so glad max like saved her and he did come in handy as a blood bag <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
Dude, Max, you must have a lot of blood to spare. You've been losing a lot of blood and you're still functioning. But yeah, that's all I had to say about Fury Road. Great movie. And I want to thank everyone for encouraging me to watch this because I don't think I would have watched it, but then I would have been missing out. Thank you guys for watching this video. See you guys in the next one.